Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and uh, Derek. Derek has uh, solved a mystery for me that's been uh, confounding me for the last year or so. In that, uh, like two years ago, I lost a good amount of weight. Put a little bit back. Okay, put a lot back. Um, <laughs> not all of it. Everyone says, you're going to regain all of it. I did it. Um, but um, I'm trying to get back to that, you know, real, you know, borderline twink levels I was uh, in uh, 2019. And uh, I've been unable to. Although it is, I've been, you know, lifting weights more. And uh, so I, I'm not really sure how much is muscle. But I didn't realize that your body eventually gets used to reduced caloric intake. After a while, you don't lose weight from it. You just end up, you know, just staying the same. And eventually you can actually gain weight at a reduced caloric intake just because your body just kind of belligerently or... And they're like, fine, <laughs> fine. Uh, so they just uh, dial down your metabolism. So I got to go shake things up by doing a lot of cardio and calisthenics. Although my friend says people stopped saying that in the 1950s. Um, but uh, I'm going to bring back uh, what used to get me in trouble in the Marines all the time, which is walking while reading. Um, and so I've got this stack of books. I, I got in trouble because uh, officers would get tense. They would feel like they're not going to get their salute. So they'd start yelling at me when I was there. We were like 40 feet apart. You know, I'm about to walk by him. He's like, aren't you going to salute, Marine? I was like, in my head, I'm like, sir, I got like 20 or 30 more. I got 10 to 20 feet, you know, before I need to salute you. But it, they would get very uh, tense about it. Uh, so what do I got here? Dune, uh, manga in theory and practice, and then future noir about the making of Blade Runner. Uh, so uh, anyway, um... Uh, <laughs> my friend just sent me an idea. I don't even think he was trying to give me an idea for a video. He was just talking yesterday. He's like, hey, I read uh, Gail Simone's Secret Six, and it was really good. So then I went on a deep dive of uh, Gail Simone and her social media addiction and how it effectively it not only not just destroyed her career as a writer, a comic book writer, but effectively erased it. Um, people talk all the time. They go, oh, yeah, I've. I forgot she writes. I remember she did something a couple years ago you roasted, but yeah, nobody thinks about her as a comic book writer. They think about her as someone who tweets. Somebody looked up... I I couldn't see the number of tweets, but I guess someone looked it up and it was in the hundreds of thousands of tweets. That's insane. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you know, after spending half a day researching uh, her own social media addiction, I had to... Uh, Start thinking about my own. And, you know, they always talk about the problematic, you know, uh, uh, tweets. So th the funny thing is they're always finding tweets from years that I didn't know Twitter even existed. <laughs> you know, it's like this actor's problematic tweet from 2009. I was like, what? I don't even remember Twitter existing in 2009. Was that like day one? Um, like if the, what if the first tweet ever was was problematic? Um, uh, but anyway, so uh, then I was like, well, how old is Facebook? I went to go look that up because I, I remember that vaguely from um, like in between the Marines and the Army. So this would have been like, you know, uh, 2004, 2006. But I think it was the Facebook back then. And then I remember it. When I was in the army in Afghanistan, when we would get back to, you know, like Kandahar, people, would, oh, I'm going to check my Facebook. So that was 2008, 2009. So I was like, I want to see how far back, you know, Facebook it goes. And then I saw that Facebook added a feature. I think it's just on um, smartphones where you can search like every like uh, comment post you've ever done. So I was like. All right, let's do this. <laughs> and that was very, very uh, depressing, but ultimately uh, a learning experience, not just for me, but uh, for humanity. Uh, so I'm not going to bury the lead, is that my previous you know, idea of uh, social media addiction was it had to do with um, uh, being very political and being uh, very, and also the, some people are just extremely mentally ill. Uh, but the more I thought about it, and I'm, I'm talking about like for hours, just kind of rolling this around in my head and, and you know, uh, is that um, there's basically a couple of th three things that um, I used to look at, you know, uh, social media addiction as a disease. But it's actually, in my opinion, a symptom of, uh, you know, things. I mean, this is kind of obvious. You know, things aren't doing 
so great for you. But these are the, the three tent poles of uh, social media addiction. And I hope I, re- <laughs> I did this so many times in my head, I'm feeling like I'm going to forget one. So one is um, isolation. Second one is frustration. And the third one is time. Uh, this guy, Gad Sad, God Sad, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, he was going in on Seth Rogen. So that was weird. Uh, and he started doing some sort of like armchair uh, psychology, psychiatry, and he was analyzing. And t- But the problem was he kept trying to talk about Seth, but then he was just saying, you know, basically people like you. And then Seth says, you know, you say I'm like this because I'm rich now and I'm trying to, you know, assuage my guilt. But I was like this when I was poor. So explain that. And I thought that was really well put. Um, uh, because originally I kept saying, oh, this is, you know, broke people. They don't have anything better to do. But when I looked at my history of barely being on Facebook, being on Facebook and being pretty chill, being on Facebook and being a huge asshole, holy shit, massive asshole. Um, and then chilling out again and then just, I barely use it at all again. Um, it didn't have to do with me making more money. In fact, I started chilling out just at the beginning uh, of me making money. And at the beginning, I was chill and I was super poor, like Coinstar poor, like, you know, putting change into a machine and then they take, what do they take, like 8% and then using a little slip of paper to buy groceries. So it had nothing to do with poverty, which I was surprised about. Um, And that was uh, Seth Rogen really, uh, you know, uh, you know, he flipped it. He's like, I was like this when I was poor. So, you know, like, <laughs> explain that. So um, what I ended up doing is circling back to, so you know, obviously I can look at these tweets in different times. And I know, you know, everything that was going on, you know, uh, work situation and where I lived and relationships and, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff. And I found consistently it had nothing to do with um, uh, poverty or wealth absolutely nothing, which explains why so many celebrities fall into social media addiction. It had to do mainly with isolation. And then I started thinking more about what is isolation. You know, a million poets and writers have pointed out that you can be in the middle of the desert and be completely at peace. And you can be in the middle of Manhattan and you will have never felt more alone in your life. And having moved in and out of Manhattan, I can tell you that there is a very distinct loneliness of, you know, being in New York City. Uh, You know, even if you have friends, but sometimes they're all the way across. And they might got a friend who lives in the freaking the Bronx or like, you know, Brooklyn and you're in Manhattan. You're like, it's like two hours each way. When you when you add in everything, when you add in getting ready and, you know, Go into the subway, and I mean, subway is usually faster than a, a car or a taxi. But so, a lot of it had me think about isolation. And the typical thing about isolation is like you don't have friends. Well, there's different types of isolations. You know, there's um, uh, the isolation of being in a uh, uh, basically a dead relationship, uh, where it's you might not be arguing, but you're also not talking. There's also, and this happens a lot, you know, in uh, not just uh, blue collar, but uh, in professional relationships, I mean, we're talking about two professionals um, dating or living together, is that you have such different um, schedules that you effectively never see each other, even if you are living together. So you're isolated in a relationship, uh, what do they call it, cohabitating, cohabiting, whatever, living together. Um, And then there's, but the funny thing is, you know, I, I would move for my career, but then I would find that at the periods where I was moving, I wasn't being an asshole and I wasn't posting because I was busy. I didn't have time. That's the crucial factor. You have to be isolated. You have to be frustrated about something. And you have to have time. And and those three together, those will put you down a spiral. The, 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 The visual I came up with about social media addiction is it's as if you're in a prison cell. And you know how in the movies... You know, they give you the utensils and then they count them when they get back. Well, for whatever reason, your guard did not notice that you hid the spoon. So now you've got a metal spoon. And oh boy, what can you do? 
Oh, are you going to go at the uh, the bars in the window? You're going to work at that? Are you going to try to get, you know, through the wall? Maybe there's like a little access tunnel and, you know, for heating or something like that. And you can get to the, the boiler room. No, no. You just go to the floor and you dig straight down <laughs> forever. Um, so the way I, you know, got out is, you know, eventually my life became uh, uh, less isolated. Now, this is a different thing than just social media addiction is not necessarily being an asshole online. For instance, people like to bring up 2017. And, you know, often when I see, you know, things I tweeted or, or said in a video, uh, the funny thing is that this phrase, needlessly bellicose, always comes into my head. It's a nice way of saying, it, you know, a combative. Uh, but I don't qualify that because even though I was definitely an asshole a lot in 2017, people were trying to destroy my entire life make me homeless and get me to kill myself. So <laughs> if I was a little salty, I had reason to, especially since it just started from me just making videos and saying stuff like fake geek girl. Like it wasn't that, it was by no means an excuse to try to destroy someone's life and drive them to suicide. So this isn't about that. This is actually separate from that. This is actually from my pre having a channel, just being a general asshole to people um and the funny thing is it was like it was a couple years it was like 2012 to like 2015 uh, or 16 and like it like i can look at it and i can see and it, what i said to myself is like you sound like an sjw not in espousing far left politics but you know uh being very uh rude to people being very uh sanctimonious not listening. The funny thing is that I look at, you know, I was usually arguing about whatever was in politics at the time. Uh, so we're talking about the 2012 election. We're talking about the all kinds of whatever was like the thing to argue about online from like 2012 to like 2015 or 16. I don't really care about politics. And I didn't back then. It was just something to argue about because I was isolated I was frustrated and I had so much free time. It was stupid. At one point, uh, I got a good IT job and after a couple months of training, it was basically, okay, so you're going to be here alone all night, you know, uh, and uh, you'll have some people working with you the first hour and the last hour, but you're going to be alone for, because uh, I worked 10 hour shifts, so it was eight hours in the middle of the night. Holy shit. I was an asshole and i would just i was you could see all the old posts i would just argue about any stupid ass thing it was ridiculous so uh after <laughs> going through that deep dive and being very you know angry at myself for just being a, a complete asshole i was like okay well if i'm i'm not like that now and you could say well you're doing pretty well financially um but i wasn't an asshole in 2010 and 11 when i was very 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 poor uh, so I feel like I've, you know, I've cracked the code and it doesn't have to do with mental illness, although that will make, you know, things worse. Um, and social media addiction can, you know, increase mental illness or even create it in someone. I don't think that's where it comes from. Um, I think it comes from isolation and isolation is more than just, you don't have anyone to talk to. It can be, you're in the same apartment or house, but you're not communicating. It can be you have different schedules um, and, and obviously you can, but, but again, you take out one of those, you take out frustration. You can have isolation a lot of time, but you don't have frustration. You're not going to be arguing with people and being an asshole online. It's just not going to happen. You're going to read Dune by Frank Herbert or manga in theory and practice by Hirohiko Araki or future noir by Paul M. Salmon. Oh, that sounds good. I've actually got some salmon in the fridge. Anyway, uh, so the good news is if you find yourself in the grips of social media addiction, uh, you don't have to destroy all three, you know, tent poles. You just have to knock one out. And uh, the time can be, you know, getting a hobby. It can be walking for an hour or two a day, reading Dune, and hopefully not tripping. Although it would be ironic if you were walking in sand and then you couldn't find the book um but uh anyway so uh you, if you can take out any one of those 
isolation, frustration. So again, you know, when I look at, um, and I, I don't want to be like armchair psychologist for uh, Seth Rogen, but I just went to his Wikipedia and I saw his age 38 and I was like, that's pretty close to the time where I started being an asshole online. It's something like you're just, you're starting middle age and maybe you're like, oh, is this all there is? So that leads to frustration. And then not to be personal, but I looked, oh, is he single? Is he married? He's married, but he's been married for 10 years. And that's where, uh, you know, from my friends tell me that's where, <laughs> that's where it's just like, oh, you again. So, you know, maybe there's something there. Maybe uh, I don't want to, uh, what do you say? Guess. But it, it's, it's just a theory. So um, I like Seth Rogen just fine. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I see him being, you know, uh, uh, bellicose, needlessly bellicose. <laughs> I'm going to put that in as the, uh, uh, the title of the video. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you don't have to destroy, you don't, like, you're not like, holy shit, do I have to fix my entire life to break this social media addiction? I don't think you do. I think you just have to knock out one of those tent poles. And I would say time, finding something to do with your time. I was cleaning up the backyard for hours yesterday. I had the best freaking time. It was awesome I, I had to stop when the sun started going down i was like what what is this uh, <laughs> anyway uh oh i uh, forgot to say uh rock and roll ninja is doing really good it's um we're not having the problem we had on the last book where um a ton of backers for the first day because there was a first day you know backers uh special perk um and then the second day it was like nobody backed People like it. So people who missed out for whatever reason, they're like, no, this still sounds cool. So it wasn't quite as steep of a drop. Uh, we're at uh, we're coming in on 700 backers. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I know people don't want to hear this, but, you know, there's this old theory about, you know, you can build an entire career off of 1,000 dedicated fans. Um, I think the heyday of crowdfunding was last year and things are going to go down. They're not going to totally uh, be destroyed. So um, I think we're going to be back to the days where anyone who gets a thousand backers or more, that's considered, hey, you did really good. You got a thousand backers. Be very, very grateful. And I'm very grateful. And we're rounding on 700 on uh, day, was it two or three? Two or three. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.